Hello and welcome to the Mexop demonstration series where you can see live demonstrations for real users and real world applications. For more information about our products or to schedule your own live demonstration, just give us a call or visit us at www.mexop.com. This video demonstrates how Rhino 3D Print can be used to repair and prepare 3D point clouds for machining and RhinoCam. Without further delay, we invite you to sit back and enjoy the demonstration. Uh, please let me know if you're able to view my desktop. Yep. Okay, I have Rhinoceros 5 open and uh, the plugin we're going to demo right now is the Rhino 3D Print. So if you click on the Rhino 3D Print on the menu in Rhinoceros, you can select browser and this displays the 3D Print browser. So it's very similar to your CAM browser interface. So this is also another plugin that's developed by Mexoc and this plugin is uh, great for uh, working with point clouds, uh, creating meshes, repairing, mesh healing, mesh fixing and there's a whole bunch of mesh tools that are offered with this plugin. This plugin is called as Rhino 3D Print as primarily the mesh tools are more commonly used for 3D printing application but it can also be used for application like this one here where we want to bring in a scan uh, point cloud data and then create a, a mesh from it and then prepare it for CNC machining or CNC process, right? So this uh, uh, browser has five different tabs in here. You have create where you can create mesh primitives. You can also create mesh from point clouds and also you can convert a solid surface geometry into a mesh. So these are the functionalities under the create tab. Now the model tab has powerful tools for boolean operations like adding two meshes, subtraction, intersection, you can perform intersection and split, you can do offset and split where you can create like a shell up, you know on it and also you have a hull where you can basically like do like a like just a like a gift wrap kind of wrapping around an object and also you can do slicing and create curves. The inspect and modify tab allows you to do analysis like you can do reflection line analysis curvature, you can compare two meshes and also it has tools for modification where you can uh, reduce a mesh. Let's say for example you brought in a mesh or a, you know uh, an STL file which has basically over you know let's say a million triangles and you want to reduce the mesh count so you want to do some decimation so the reduce allows you to reduce the count and you can also do mesh remeshing, smoothing of meshes and also mesh manipulation and of course we have powerful tools for repairing meshes. You can manually fix holes you can automatically fix holes, you can identify holes and fix it. You can also do stitch and close for stitching and closing open meshes. Now if you have a 3D printer, now these tools would be helpful where you can do support generation, part orientation, uh, fit the mesh into the printer's volume and then you can either export as STL, SLA or you can directly send it to your 3D printer if you're running a Windows 10 or Windows 8 or you know 8.1 you know operating system. We can also generate G code for 3D printers as well with this plugin. Now let's take a look at the file that you sent us and how best we can work with it. So I have two files from you. So first let's take the uh, sample 2 and then we'll go back and look at the sample 1. So in Rhino you can bring in point data. So you have different point file formats Rhino can support and you can click open, select the file and pick open. Now Rhino will prompt you with this import option uh, to find out how the point data is saved uh, so whether if the file has uh, you know separated by commas, that's typically the case for point files or it could be space. So in this particular case it's a comma separated so I'm going to pick OK and you will notice that it basically translates the point data into Rhino. So what you're looking at here is just the a whole bunch of points on this particular file. Are you able to view it? Yes. yes. Okay, great. So now if you take a look at the Rhino 3D print browser, it shows that you have one point cloud data in here that shows how many points are in this and it also gives you information about the volume here. You have the length, width and the height as you can see it. Now you can still use all of your Rhino tools. If you want to rotate this part, I can rotate it over so it lays it flat, so 90 degree rotation. So we got this point data. Now what can you do with this point data, right? So you need to be able to be able to like, you know, convert it into a, a mesh so you can actually machine it, right? So we have a tool called Create Mesh from Point Cloud. So you select this Create Mesh from Point Cloud. It says select the Point Cloud to create meshes. You just highlight this point data and then you press enter or right click when done. Now this basically displays the dialog below in here 
to specify the parameters for uh, mesh creation. What I'm going to do is since this file is in millimeter units, as you can see right there, I'm just going to use a search radius. I'll put in 10 millimeters and leave everything else as default and then hit create. You will notice that now it takes each of those point data and converts it into a mesh like an STL file. And your mesh has been created and you can see that the mesh object shows up in this data tree. And I'm going to hide the point data so it makes it easier for us to view the mesh. Now when I click on shade display, you will see that it created a mesh from that point data and it did a pretty good job but you do see that there are several holes on this mesh, right? Now, how can we fix those? We can go to the tab called Repair, and before I fix the holes, I want to do a diagnostic run and see how many open holes are there. So what I'm going to look for here is just for open holes. And I'm going to hit Run Check, and you'll see that it identified close to about 16,000 holes. You see each of those, uh, you know, the vertices marked in red, the edges of the triangle marked in red, they're all open holes on the model. Now let's go ahead and fix this here. There's a one button click command called auto fix. This is a very powerful command where it can automatically fix holes, fix self intersections, and close to make it a watertight mesh. So right now it's working on performing the auto fix operation in here to fix this open mesh to form a closed watertight model. Now once this is fixed, you will see the result of it. Now we currently have over, you know, 228,000, so just under a quarter million triangles on us. And there's your mesh. It's fixed. Now if I go back in here and perform a diagnostic check again for open edges, you'll see that it says no issues detected. Now this model is currently ready for generating your toolpaths. You can go into RhinoCam and generate toolpaths. Now if you want to make some changes, so let's say for example you wanted to reduce the number of triangles in here, you can actually go into Inspect and Modify, you can say Reduce Mesh, you can select the object, the mesh geometry, and you can specify by how much you want to reduce. You can either do a percentage or you can say by maximum deviation. I can say reduce it down maybe you know, you know 30%, make it smaller by 30%. And when I hit Reduce, it'll go ahead and reduce this mesh so instead of you know being at 228,000 triangles, it's now down to like you know close to 160,000 triangles on it. And you have unlimited undos and redos. You can just do an undo in Rhino. It'll undo it. Now, once this model is ready here, we can go uh, to the process of machining it here. So if you need to rotate the model to line it up, so I can use the commands in Rhino to line it up right there. And we can go into RhinoCam for uh, machining it. So you just go to Rhino Cam and select your mill browser and generate your toolpaths. Well it is, as you can see it's just a few button clicks, you bring in a model, you then you know create your mesh from point clouds and then you repair it and then it's ready for machining. Now if I want to create a toolpath on it I can just go to the mill browser in here, I can hide the uh, 3D print browser so display our stock material. You can see it automatically displays the length, width, and height. Since this is in millimeter units, it's showing all the measurements in millimeters. If you want to switch the units to inches, you can right-click here, go to Unit Settings in Rhino, uh, switch the model the units from millimeters to inches. Then it's asking, do you want to scale it? We select Yes, and the model units are switched right there. And there's your model. Then we can go back in here and choose the stock material. We can say we want to pick the uh, you know, box stock right there. It gives you the length, width, and the height. So let's say we want to start with a three-quarter inch uh, blank, and you can specify the stock right there. And then you go select your post processor in here. Uh, I'll just go with the uh, the Mark III post, for example, here uh, the new CNC Mark III. But you know, I I know you have several other post processors in here, so we'll grab the you know we'll pick the post that's appropriate at that point of time. So we can choose the file extension. And then you go ahead and create your, uh, establish your origin. So you can say, set wall coordinates, set to start, ISZ Southwest. It automatically establishes your origin right there. And let's say you just want to do a finishing pass. Go over to three axis. You can select finishing, grab your tool for it. So let's say you want to use an eighth inch ball mill to run a finishing cut for it. Uh, specify your beats and speeds, your clearance definition, your cutting parameters. I'll just change the angle of cut to 45. We'll do maybe like 15% step over. 
can specify any Z containments, your entry and exit, you can set your clearance definition, and then I hit generate. So from a point cloud data, we created a mesh, and from the mesh, we auto fixed it to close all the holes, and now here's your toolpath generated in RhinoCam. So you have an end-to-end -end solution right there. And let's go run a simulation in here. So that's your stock right there. You can hit the play button. So let me make sure I display the, the stock in here during simulation. And there it is. You can always speed up the simulation. So I could have done even a roughing in another type of uh, processes here. I just chose to do a finishing cut on it, as you see it. Right. Um, Uday, uh, there's a local company around the corner from us that has uh, barrel arms and um, laser scanners, and that's who we use to do this. Um, what are other people using these days um, to create that point cloud geometry? Yeah, point cloud is typically, uh, the source of point cloud in most cases is typically from um, a scanner. But you could be creating point cloud even in Rhino. Rhino can create point clouds uh, from a 3D model as well. So it really depends on, um, you know, what is the source you want to use for it. So in most cases, the point cloud data comes from a 3D scanner or digitized, uh, you know, so you want to basically do a uh, kind of a reverse engineering process, right? Right. So that's where the point cloud comes in and we can take the point cloud and create a mesh and then create tool packs. I guess more specifically, is there other equipment that you that you know that does a good job to create point clouds? Well, uh, you mean a 3D scanner, a specific brand? Yeah. Um, I'm not, uh, you know, we don't have any a particular scanner that would I would call it a favorite but you know we work with pretty much any 3d scanner that can generate uh, you know point data so there are several ones out there they're like handheld scanners and you know large industrial scanners depending on the type of application and the precision that you need so yeah, you know you can recommend uh, you know based on that so you know we've had customers use a variety of different scanners to basically scan and bring it in that is correct so if you give us the point data we can work with it okay and now I can post process this in here and there is your posted G code it's working on outputting the G code in here Suppose you want to make this a little more symmetric. You see there's a lot of carving in here and you want to touch up certain parts of it. How would we go about modifying this model? Sure. Uh, we can actually go into um, the 3D print browser. And we have options in here where you can actually, uh, if you want to do mesh smoothing or, or you want to mesh remesh it, you can actually do a smoothing of the mesh and you can select the mesh in here and you can specify a radius and an area where you want to smooth it. I can just go here and say this area. So basically use that radius region to smooth it out. Or you could even just say you want to specify a radius in here, let's say, you know, an eighth inch radius. I can specifically choose areas around which I want to perform mesh smoothing in here and I can specify the number of iterations and it'll basically smoothen out those areas on the mesh. There you go. So you can do mesh editing, mesh manipulation using these tools in here. You can also use the tools that are available in Rhino to modify the mesh. Okay. Now the Rhino 3D print is available as a fully functional demo for 30 days. So if you download a demo of Rhino 3D print from our website, you can run it for 30 days uh, as, you know, which is basically as good as a full licensed copy. So it'll let you do it for 30, 30 days. Okay. Now let me bring in the other model in here. So um, I'm going to go back into Rhino and then load the other part. Hey, uh, Uday, uh, could you send me that other file before you post it? Like, you 
Yeah, I have the STL file with me. I can go ahead and uh, make that available to you. And if you want to go ahead and uh, generate a toolpad uh, in your copy of RhinoCam, you can do that. Great. I, I have it saved, so I'll email it to you. So here's your other model right there. It looks like a little bit uh, more complex. It requires probably some four axis machining. So we'll go through the same process here. Create a mesh from point cloud. Select this and then hit create. So that basically creates your mesh. So it's going through the process of creating the mesh from the point cloud data. You see that the 3D print plugin is such a powerful tool and it can be used for a variety of different applications. Uh, going from a mesh to a NURBS model uh, is uh, it's not as simple as going from a NURBS uh, from NURBS to mesh. So mesh to NURBS is much uh, it's a much uh, harder process but there are uh, some plugins that are available for Rhino that can do that so you may have to look at Rhino's other uh, plugin products but we do not have a product that would do mesh to NURBS. Uh, we can machine directly to meshes or like SDL files so we wouldn't have to do any conversion unless you wanted to use it for a different application altogether. So here you can see that we got a pretty good uh, mesh in here, right? Mm -hmm. From the point data. So again, the same step. So we'll see. You can see that it has, you know, over 600,000 triangles on it. Now let's go ahead and uh, perform a diagnostic check on this, and you'll see that there is about 130,000 open edges. Now we'll do the same process, do an auto fix on it. Now the auto fix could take anywhere from a few seconds to a few minutes to complete this process in here. Now while this is processing here, I could even show you the model what I generated. So it probably might take a minute or two to generate it, but you know, you'll see that it'll get done with it. So this is a very powerful tool. And there are a lot more features available in 3D print, uh, like you can do an offsetting of a mesh, you can do mesh um, splitting. So powerful tools. If you have a large model which you can't, you know, for example, the model can't fit into the work envelope of your machine table, then you may have to slice it into multiple parts to be able to machine it. Now, one of the applications could be, for example, this particular model, if the user does not plan to have a rotary axis or your four axis setup, you can slice it or split it in half and then you can have it on a machine on like two halves on your three axis setup and then you can basically glue them back together, right? So, or you can have a large model that may not even fit into the work envelope, so you can split them into multiple areas. So currently it is processing still the auto fixing, it's trying to fix all of those, you know, 130,000 holes. You can see that the, the auto fixing just got done here. So there it is. Sorry? If we zoom in into, um, if you move your camera right there, yeah. So if you want to do like localized cleanup or smoothing out, you got to use these tools in here to use a reduce mesh, remesh, you can smoothen them out using these tools. You can also use the tools, mesh tools in Rhino, also in addition to the, you know, tools in 3D print. So that makes it a powerful set of mesh tools for you guys for both in Rhino and Rhino 3D print because a lot of these are much easier to be you know easier to work with in Rhino 3D print and Rhino does not have all of those tools for you know the type of mesh editing that you like to perform. Brilliant.